Alright, welcome to Star Trek Redemption. This is episode 11. And we're going to just take it off um, where we left off. Take it up where we left off. And uh, essentially what happened last time, very quick recap, is that the Vulcan Serac on the, um, the planet that um, the Saturn had found gave you um, information to what he claims was a wormhole that his people, the Vulcans, uh, used to get here from um, from the Alpha Quadrant. And, um, yeah, so, um, especially back then, when ships were a lot slower, it would have taken years and years and years, so... Uh, he claims this is how they got there. Um, it, the coordinates do lead to the dark nebula uh, that you had scanned uh, some time ago, so uh, you know that this area does exist and you're heading in that direction. And you are, at this point, beginning to see spatial anomalies uh, on your somewhat malfunctioning sensors as you grow closer. Let me uh, switch the scene. The USS Saturn begins to approach this vast dark space nebula. The contents of this nebula are somewhat um, unknown. These types of nebulas are known. Um, to Starfleet and have been mapped out before, but they have very, very uh, chaotic um, qualities to them. Uh, some can contain um, dwarf stars, um, some can contain uh, what appear to be random wormholes. And uh, as the USS Saturn approaches, uh, you wonder if this is possibly the way home. And I'll uh, let you guys decide what you want to do here. So, Commander Verma would be on the bridge uh, monitoring all the ship stations um, before the were getting closer to this, um, you know, whatever final preparations we had discussed the last mm -hmm. session, he's just making sure that all of that is uh, being done. Um, you have also ordered um, all the, um, whatever parts of the ship um, that are, um, uh, Compromised, right? Like venting to space, or they have basically no atmosphere there. Um, you would have made sure that a uh, couple of bulkheads forward of that were also sealed, right? Move the people into um, core areas at this point. Mm -hmm. So basically, trying to make sure everybody is in a much tighter space than being spread up, spread across the ship. Yeah. Um, and collapsing, not collapsing, but basically shutting down bulkheads, a few decks or s stations forward of what's already kind of gone bad, um, does preparing for any eventuality within the nebula. Um, yeah, I believe you did say that you um, that you guys were uh, reclaiming your, um, making your way to the shuttle to get um, access to it. I believe that was one of the things you wanted yes. to do as well. Um, he had ordered Lieutenant Quick to um, find a way with his men, if there's a way to get to those shuttles. Um, yeah, you have your full complement of shuttles. The the two, I think there's two normally. Um, Quick was able to, to get that. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so, and apart from that, Commander Verma would be on the bridge. Um, uh, if Lieutenant Tala is not on the bridge, he would uh, finger on the communicator and um, 
basically get a status update it turns out we are approaching the nebula what do the sensors indicate um um to la would uh, most likely um probably approaching um the nebula she'd finally come up to um um just come up to uh top deck um and if, uh, she's been all over the ship the past bit mostly focusing on engineering and uh, astrogation trying to get as much uh pre information she could from the nebula of course um really just trying to prep um any probes that they were going to send inside uh but at this point she'd be on the bridge with commander verma and she'd kind of key into the sensors to see what information she could uh, gather without sending any probes in okay once again Tala scans the sensors and looks up to uh, Commander. There doesn't seem to be very much information at this time. Um, according to the sensors, there appears to be a wormhole of some type. But unfortunately, we will not be able to get any more information until we send out the probes. very well um do we have a crewman um that has been piloting the ship pain yeah probably uh, obviously i would say yes um it could be pain um although i don't think that he's like it was faulkner um but there are some crewmen that have been doing that yes Okay, fine. Um yeah. All right. So, uh here's what we're going to do, Lieutenant. Um I will get our ship as close to the nebula without actually entering it. And from there you can launch your probes. Hey, I commander. So, Commander Verma uh would drop the ship down to maybe half impulse. and basically maneuver it on the fringes of the nebula itself but not not really entering it mm -hmm. he would also ask lieutenant quick to uh, man um, the tactical stations just in case all right commander uh due to the reduction in power from the weapons to use in other systems with higher priority quick's been checking over the ship's shields and making sure to compensate for any differences in radiation that are being emitted from the uh, this area uh, making sure the shields are up to par and uh and then he starts to uh uh starts to follow uh commander verma's orders Yeah, you stand at tactical. Your shields are um at full um currently. You can tell that there's uh at this distance no stress on them uh from any environmental effects of, of the nebula, but uh it doesn't take a scientist to really uh tell that it is quite uh chaotic and potentially dangerous in there. Um if you want to get closer uh, go ahead and give me a control con Okay Uh difficulty would be 1 Okay control con control I do believe you have momentum still um Uh yes and looks like 2 momentum 15 threat is what we're at currently Okay, I'm going to use one momentum to increase the dice. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. 
Um, okay, so that's uh, four momentum gained. Um, you, so the rest of the crew watches as Commander Verma pilots the ship. Um, he has on probably occasion here and there, but this is the first time you've actually seen his skill. And he puts you right on the edge of the nebula. Uh, Lieutenant Quick, you can see the readings on the shield. They just go up just a fraction of a percentage, um, one decimal point, um, as he puts you right in uh, the absolute perfect range um, for the probes. And Commander Verma, how does that look in your end? Commander Verma, these past hours leading up to the approach to the nebula has been thinking about um, most of all he's been thinking about fond memories that he has um, discussing astral charts with his grandfather and navigating the stars even though they were on earth and he felt when when his grandfather spoke to him, even though he did not have, you know, taken advanced courses at Starfleet yet, he was still a boy then, he kind of instinctively understood the technique, the the skill, part of it even, the art of navigating a starship through not really emptiness, is it? There is gravity everywhere. There is forces that one doesn't always sense. Um, and it's effortless. It's, it's, to, to an untrained eye, it would look no more than somebody breathing or somebody walking. To Commander Verma, navigating this ship may not be his. But these past few days, he has made it his. And feels right even though she's broken and with these thoughts he brings the ship right to the point that he intended it to be yeah the ship is pointed straight into the nebula with the um, torpedo bays in perfect alignment um, for a shot uh, to send the probe into the nebula and collect the data you might need he looks to Lieutenant Talar. Lieutenant, you may fire the probes when ready. And Talar nods, looking back down to send. Um, she starts pressing some uh, different buttons and everything on the pad. Firing probes. And she'll uh, launch them into the nebula. Quick is going to smirk and uh, he's got a, s a smile on the side of his mouth and he shakes his head. You can tell the commander's on on the helm. Mm -hmm. Tala looks too quick and you can see her eyebrow raises slightly. Um, Lieutenant Tala, give me a security control roll. Difficulty two five momentum in the pool um i'm not sure what applicable focus might i don't believe you have it uh, okay uh, i am going to use a momentum on this okay i would suggest control. use three so you can use roll two more die oh yeah because we have a lot now okay so 40 20 i will use three mm-hmm That was a good idea. Okay, so uh, generated three momentum, and there's one complication. Okay, um, Tala launches these probes into the nebula, and uh, it's, it takes a few minutes, um, but she begins to see the pingbacks from the probes as they are uh, returning information from deep in the nebula. Um, she's not exactly sure how long it will uh, take to um, 
collect all the data she needs, but um, her first, uh, uh, why don't you give me a science reason roll, difficulty uh, two as well for deciphering this quickly. We're actually going to make it a difficulty three because of the complication. Mm -hmm. And, oh, uh, for deciphering the information, mm -hmm. um, can I use my uh, either astrophysics or astronomy? Yep, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yep. Alright. Spend three, buy two more. <laughs> I'll, always, I'll spend one uh, for this. Wait, hold up. <laughs> Damn it, I it. Uh, it was a uh, science reason. Yes. Difficulty three. One. Yep. Put focus. Just got it. Um, so uh, I'm gonna whisper you something. Yeah, you can see uh, Tala looking down and uh, pouring over the information. Um, there's a little bit of uh, reflection back from the screen itself as her eyes kind of dart across, trying to quickly absorb and translate the information from uh, all her years and kind of studying um, space and different anomalies, trying to figure out exactly what's going on out there. Taking her a while to read. Yeah, it's taken the GM a while to whisper because <laughs> Roll Twenty does not like uh, apostrophes. I guess. There we go. Mm, you can see as Tola analyzes the information. Um, her eyes narrow slightly. She looks to the commander. Commander, you should take a look at this. Yes. And she kind of points out uh, some of the information when he comes over. Apparently, the data shows that there are signs of uh, both organic and synthetic cellular traces. Um, there appears to be a wormhole, um, so like. Um, anomaly out there, but unfortunately the databases contain no such information regarding anything like this. Mm, I'm trying to run it through some sort of scans to see if anything matches, but so far there is nothing. It looks almost like DNA or something. I am not exactly sure. Send the data over to Dr. Kaiser, have him look at this, the, the biologic and synthetic information. Maybe he has some medical experience that he could bring to this. Yes, Commander. She uh, sends over the information and she uh, taps her combat. Lieutenant Kaiser. Uh, yes, Lieutenant Hilar. I am sending you over information regarding the nebula and the wormhole contained within it. There are some traces of organic and synthetic life, it seems, or some sort of cellular structure. I assume with your medical expertise that you'll be able to uh, enlighten us on what exactly might be going on out there. I will definitely take a look at it and see what I can figure out. I will contact you and I've had a chance to evaluate it. Thank you, Lieutenant. Kaiser out and taps the badge and bring up the computer, um, computer and 
mm-hmm. wait to receive the data. Yeah, it's almost instantaneous. Um, all the sensor data, which is continually streaming in from the actual probes, it doesn't stop. Um, if you want to give me a reason medicine difficulty two, um, applicable focus for you. Okay. I believe you have at least three in the pool. Um, you have four in the pool. I'll use uh, I'll use one for three dice. Um, okay. And I, you, you said there is an applicable yes. focus. Yes. Mm-hmm. Reasons, reason medicine, or reason science. Uh, medicine. Okay, uh, gain one momentum. I'm just gonna take a threat on that. Um, I'm gonna whisper you. Kaiser does his evaluation and get a troubled look on his face, but looks through. Hmm. Lieutenant Talal, that's the comm badge. And she receives a. Yes, Lieutenant Kaiser. I ran some cross references the data you sent me. I've got some news. I'm leaning towards it being not so good news these life signs you're showing me the mix of organisms synthetic and biological it is similar to borg nanites that we reviewed it's appears that they are constantly repairing something changing something uncertain on that point but there's no doubt there are similarities to what we've encountered before Mm, Tala, she ever so slightly um, stiffens a bit, and she looks to the command. Um, I'm assuming uh, at this point that he heard. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Repairing <sighs> something. Commander Verman is staring at the view screen at the nebula. Borg, okay. Um, Lieutenant Quick, can you... I want you to run some data queries on the ship's computer. Most galaxy-class starships like this, they are continuously gathering data in all its situations, including the battle we had with the Borg. See if we can use any of that data to identify Borg ship signatures. Use that to program one more probe, Lieutenant Tala. Send it out there. Try to do a pattern recognition. See if we can find where the Borg are within the nebula. If need be, fire a few more probes. Mm. Commander, one of my other thoughts, maybe if they say some sort of um, wormhole, uh, maybe that the these Borg nanites are trying to maintain this wormhole to be open. Maybe it does not open either naturally or they are forcing it open. Um, another issue might be there needs to be some sort of um, Borg signature to be able to get through the wormhole itself. Yes. Now, it's possible that the nanites may be keeping the wormhole open, in which case, that's good for us. Uh, What I'm concerned about is a Borg ship in the clouds of that nebula. 
it's either stuck it's trying to repair itself maybe the nebula is doing something to it we do not know but if we go in and they do see us i don't think we want to take them on within that nebula if it's just nanites if it's just bog loose nanites just in the nebula that's fine i just want to make sure that there's no bog ship waiting for us in there of course commander why would they be keeping the, the wormhole open he looks over towards tala i have a theory regarding mm, those um sorry tet who are the uh are the alien species that were following um the Borg and basically collecting all the scavengers. Oh, they are the um, Lurians? Mm, I have a theory that maybe the Borg have found different wormholes such as this. Uh, maybe use these nanites to maintain them. Have um, attacked different ships to maybe gather information or increase their own armies. Maybe that's how the Lurians were able to find them in the first place and have followed them here and there. Maybe we should inquire with our friend, the Ferengi. Uh, quick nods. Yeah, maybe we can get some more information out of them. Uh, and then quick starts to uh, scan. Yep. Go ahead and give me a security reason roll. Um, you have tactical systems, which is good enough for a focus. You have what? Moments. What difficulty? Oh, I'm sorry. Difficulty um, one for this one. Because you're you're actually just querying your own database. Um, okay, so another complication. I'll take that threat, um, and you gain a momentum. Um, I will whisper you quick. And you were looking for any um, known um, composites of the material you're scanning, right? Yes. Uh, basically, the idea is that. Um, kind of like a pattern recognition. We've met the Borg. Uh, we know kind of what their weapon signatures or their engine signatures look like. Uh, try and match that to the probe data to see if there's any ship looming in there. Yeah. Yeah, so quick starts uh, typing in on uh, hitting the buttons too. Uh, while he's thinking about uh, interrogating the Ferengi as well, um, he looks down at the readings and uh, it, it's a, is it okay if I just read this? Oh off yeah, yeah, here? sure, sure. Uh, he looks over towards Verma and to Talon. Part Borg, part Federation, but the quantum dating and the carbon dating have coming back with an air of unknown. Part Borg, part Federation. Tala looks to the commander, the captain. All right. Mm, quick kind of leans back away from the console. A little worried look on his face. Shh. 
shall I use the data queries within the next probe launch, Commander? Please do. And to law carefully and punches in um, same queries and information to scan for that Lieutenant Quick had found um, out of the signatures. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and give me a uh, science reason rule and you can also use your um, ship's computer if you want. If you do, it will add a difficult one level of difficulty. At this point it's just difficulty one, but you can try to get an assist from the computer if you want. I'm sorry, it's science... Reason? Reason. Is it the similar roll to what I did earlier? Yeah, yeah, you can, you still get okay. a five. Mm -hmm. So I get to roll an additional, okay. Um, I also have uh, technical expertise whenever you attempt a task assisted by the ship's computers or sensors, you may re-roll 1d20. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so do I roll ship first? Yep, roll ship first. Uh, it's difficulty two. I'm sorry, you said? Difficulty two. Ship yep. first, yep. Um, Ship first. And in sensors, right? Yes, sensors, computer, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry, sensors, uh, science. Okay, no help there. Okay. Um, I think I get to re-roll that, though. Uh, uh, it's probably on your roll, or is it its roll? It says you may re-roll. Oh, which may be the ship's die. Uh, okay. also yep, then you can re-roll that oh. if you want, or you could re-roll one of your die. Your die I'm might be better. Roll. Yeah, and I'm also going to spend uh, momentum, so I have 4d20 now, pretty sure. Yeah, because you get one from one of your talents, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll spend a momentum for you. You're down to four. Oh, yeah. I'm going to re-roll. <laughs> one of them. Yeah, go, <laughs> zero. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Maybe get another momentum. You're going to be capped, though. That's the thing. But. But we can use yep. it for immediate mm -hmm. information. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you could re roll into threat for Ted as well. Yeah, you could. Oh, but I got a success, so I did. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so that's three. So that's going to put you at seven. So you're going to get, um, I'm assuming you want to use one for additional information, because that makes sense, right? Yes. All right, I'm going to, give me uh, one second here. Uh, this is weird, okay. Is the Ferengi... Is is he still free to walk around the ship? Oh, I would say we... he's confined to quarters at the very least. That's up to Verma. Okay. Oh no, he would be confined to quarters. Okay. We. I still have a security detail on him. Then I think. Okay, yes. Sure. Yes. If he tried to rob us. He needs to definitely be conf confined to quarters. <laughs> I'll, he's uh... he's going for all the females. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He'd be hanging outside of Talal's quarters, which he never visits yeah. anymore. Uh... <laughs> I was just thinking, we don't have him in the brig, though, or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yet. Don't think so. So you see, you know, to Law's hands um, quickly um, go over the sensors, um, hitting the different buttons, getting the probe ready. Um, and I'm assuming this is this is from the probe information, yes? Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she sends it out, and you can see as the information feeds back, um, eyes just kind of scanning back and forth, reading over it very quickly. Hmm. Commander, there seems. There are four parts where 
this combination exists. It seems very tiny. Um, they appear to be holding the wormhole open. I can see where the entrance to it is. Um, the, but there are no large signs within the nebula. Nothing like what we experienced before with the cube. Very well. All right. I still don't want to take any chances. So here's what we're going to do, Lieutenant. We are going to rig one of our... Um, we have more people on the ship than what the... Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Mm, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use one of the the shuttles. We're going to hook it up so that I can remote control it from from the bridge helm. We're going to send it in, have all its sensors running and capture as much data. We'll try and get as close to the nebula as possible with that and see how it goes. It shall map the way for us. If all goes well, then we have a fighting chance of getting to that wormhole. If not, we'll have learned something and we still push forward. Yes, Commander. Is there any way we can simulate the effects of a biological piloting the ship? I wish there was a way, but... Do you think that Lieutenant Kaiser could um, provide input into this, at least with the information that we were receiving back, maybe see if he can translate it? Yes, that's a good idea, Lieutenant Tala. Lieutenant Quick, I want you to get down to the holding area and talk to Quat. See what he remembers of this place, what he remembers of the Lorians. Lieutenant Tala, let's talk to Lieutenant Kaiser, see what else we can rig up on that shuttle for uh, his information. Yes, Commander. All right, Commander. Commander Quick hits his comm badge. Dr. Kaiser, if you would be so kind to join me and Lieutenant Tala in the hangar, please. Of course, Commander. I'll be there presently. Taps his badge and heads out. Okay, let's, uh, let's do quick. Really quick. <laughs> hey. um, Alright, give me two seconds. Find Mr. Quat and bring him out here somewhere. Quat and Quick back at it again. The infamous duo. <laughs> I got an idea. That's because I got ten forward. <laughs> yeah, what? let's go drink, man. <laughs> Uh, what's all the information we, uh, you want me to ask him? Um, Anything and everything you can, basically, because he was the one who told us about this nebula, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -mm. That was the uh, information that we received from... Um, well, originally he did tell you about this nebula, I believe. Um, did he? I believe yes, and he said yeah. a ship or something kind of stuck in here. Oh... So, um, ask him questions about how he knows the ship was here. Does he know how it got stuck? Who is on that ship? Stuff like that. And uh, Lieutenant Quick, from what I remember about Ferengis, tell him at this point, there is a lot of money to be made once we reach... Narendra Station. He would have helped bring back an ailing ship back to the Federation. And plus, he gets to keep his life because if he goes, if we go into Nebula, he goes into Nebula, and if anything happens to the ship, he's not going to fare too well. Right. Hi, Commander. I'll see what I can get from him. 
Yeah, you head down to where he's being held. He's being held in one of these um, very uh, empty crew quarters. Um, the commander has ordered them to be um, consolidated uh, to um, lower the, um, you know, uh, a lot of these were impacted by the blast of the uh, board cubes. So this is one of the ones that are still remaining this area. You walk uh, down the hallway and uh, there's a guard outside. They nod and let you in. The door opens and Quat is laying on the ground staring up at the ceiling. He pulls his knees up underneath himself and wow! Look who it is! Well, I hope you're comfortable, Quad. Not really, human. Um, quick, like, puts a, uh, uh, walks up next to him, I guess. Uh, uncomfortably close, you know. And, uh, puts his hand on his, on his weapon and says, uh, I don't think you've been entirely honest with us. What do you mean, I've been honest? I need you to tell me everything you know. <laughs> Human, that would take too long. I know much about many things. Care to be more specific? <laughs> And quick smiles and uh, says, "Well, I'm, I'm thinking about transferring you to a." Uh, he looks around the quarters here and a more uncomfortable situation, and uh, actually, I've been told to take you to the brig and confine you, there. but. Uh, you know, I'm. I want to be nice to you. And I want you to tell me everything about the nebula, and everything about hey. the vessels. You can help us out. The nebula. Well, are we getting close to the nebula? The Lorian said there was much platinum to be made there. We are getting close, and and we could be in great danger. And what I want you to know, Quad, is that you are in great danger as well with us. Well, if those machine things are still about, that is certain. I hope that's not the case, Human. Oh, I think they are about. Hook kind of kneeled down next to him. I die, and uh, is it possible to uh, to use my interrogation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Song. Yeah. Um, difficulty. Um, boy, I don't remember how, technically how it works, but we'll say it's a difficulty two. And you have six momentum in the pool. Uh, which one is it under here? Uh, uh, that was depends on. So you're going to want to do presence and. Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. Well, it's Sorry. actually te yeah. technically it'd be command presence. Okay, command presence. Mm -hmm. And can I spend one yep. to get 3D? Yep, sure can. And uh, what would be the difficulty two. of that? I'm going to spend a threat to make it two. Okay. Uh, you need to roll. Okay, there you go. Uh, so that is uh, one momentum back. And he says, Well, what do you want to know exactly about the Nebia? All I know is there was supposedly 
What the Lurian said, there was a ship that was destroyed in here, and that there was a gateway to much riches. A gateway to much riches, huh? Well, I'll let you know, Quad. If we get back safely, there might be a lot of riches for you. If you can help us out. Wonderful. And... Females? Tilts his head. Well, of course. Uh, you'll be a hero helping out a, a federation ship like this. I do enjoy the way that female Vulcan looks. Perhaps you'll send her to my quarters for this assistance that I've given you, human. Oh, you would have to give me more information than that. <laughs> he <laughs> frowns. That's all I know! Quick frowns, too. And, uh... uh he's been... He's, he's had the calm open uh, for Verma to, like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, be hearing any, any, any of this at all. Or feeding him any, uh, any questions he wants. Uh, to ask him specifically so he turns away for a minute and he's uh, uh, as if he's like thinking um, and yeah, as, as you turn away he just begins to complain about the food it just kind of like sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher but you know it's <laughs> sorry he whispers anything else you can think of Verma? Now, I think we have gotten everything we can from the Ferengi. Aye, aye. And uh, he turns around and he says, um, Well, sorry, I guess that's just not enough information. No. Well, at least let me out of here. And he smiles and he says, I I'll put in a request. What? Frowns and fix the replicators. <clears throat> and he walks back and sits back down. Whoops, didn't mean to move you, but. And as you finish speaking to him, the scene switches to the medical bay. <laughs> So who went to the medical bay exactly? Was it just Tala? Uh, no, so it was uh, Tala and my... Uh, not the medical bay, but where the... Um, shuttle bay. The shuttle ah, bay. Ah, okay. One sec. The commander likes to get me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so at the sa more or less the same time, uh, you walk into the shuttle bay, um, you see the two shuttles sitting there, uh, ready. Dr. Kaiser, we plan to send one of these shuttles into the nebula, control it from the helm operations from the bridge. We're going to enable all the sensors we can on this ship. It would be good to know if the nebula has any effects on biologics. So while Lieutenant Tala and myself figure out how to get the shuttle hooked into our systems here so that we can remote control it, maybe you can take a look at the shuttle sensors from a a biologics perspective. Mm. Well, with with assistance, I could see about maybe 
maybe trying to rig a program on board the shuttle to see if we could emulate uh, human pilot piloting it, perhaps, or biological pilot. Indeed. If you have tissue samples or any other biological material you want to place in the shuttle and have sensors read that as well, you're welcome to do that. Uh, we could first explore the possibility of trying to dummy the system, I suppose. That would might be more useful. Otherwise, a biological material, I suppose I have some, but it's not going to give us precise readings on what will happen to a live, breathing, functioning individual. Very well. What I would recommend, um, Commander, if it is possible, uh, if there is any way we can adjust some kind of scoop to collect some of the material as we're investigating with the shuttle, that could allow us to do some contained tests on board I could supervise. Again, I don't know how possible it is to collect this matter from the nebula directly, or even if it will survive without having been part of the nebula, but it's worth a try, I suppose. Commander Verma looks to Lieutenant Tala. Lieutenant, correct me if I'm wrong. These shuttles do have nacelles, correct? I am positive that they do, Commander. And she'll start circling the uh, shuttle itself, kind of inspecting it, making sure it has um, something to collect, basically, the um, material from uh, the, the nebula. We could shut down one nacelle have it just collect matter from the nebula but not direct it into the warp engine of the shuttle and have the other one just used to power the shuttle we really we don't need maximum thrust or extreme maneuvering capabilities that would give us an ability to collect some of that matter bring it back to our ship in a indeed. contained fashion indeed that would be I think adequate we should also think about if this is a success or if there is some sort of um, danger in this um, as long as this one comes back whether it does or not we should attempt to maybe pilot one of these through the wormhole and see if we can get data back that is if the first mission is successful I do not know if we have anybody on board skilled enough to pilot that sh the shuttle through the wormhole and I do not know if it's a one-way ticket or not. If the shuttle doesn't come back, we are taking our ship in there. We, ha we have to. All I'm doing is trying to minimize the risk as much as I can. Of course. Um, let us prepare the shuttle then. See if we can get uh, remote control access online. Very well. Let me work on that while you can work on the nacelle so that we can collect matter for Lieutenant Dr. Kaiser. How about that? Yes, Commander. Okay. Why don't uh, Verma, you give an assist roll to her. Go ahead and give me an engineering. Um, let's see. This is pretty. How about insight engineering? And uh, same for you, Tala. This is for which aspect? Uh, this is nacelle? this is just in generally to rig up the nacelle and the um, remote control of the of the ship. Kind of do it with one roll. Ah, okay, okay. Um, so I'm just going to use my helm operations as a focus yep. so that we know how to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, mine, mine is an assist, correct? Yes, you'd be the assist. And let, it, okay, you can so. do it any way you want, actually. So, but um, might be better for me to assess just because I don't have a focus. Uh, uh, no. So the way the way assist oh. works is I roll a one d twenty, but you have a better engineering score than I do. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so, 
uh, but I, I can use a focus on the 1d20 assist roll that I rolled. Yeah, so he can double up if he gets low enough. Yeah, so, uh, so let me see. Engineering, insight, 1d20, applicable focus. Uh, task difficulty, I said to one. Yeah. And he rolls up. Okay. okay, so he's this given one. you one success right off the bat. Um, this is uh, a total of a difficulty two uh, for you, so... Okay. Um, I'm going to spend a momentum. Okay. okay, so you got that momentum back. Uh, yeah, you guys are able to, in fairly short order... Um, get this all um, engineered and rigged up the uh, Verma test it from a console um, uh, y yes you can come in quick uh, you guys are rigging up the, the shuttle as uh, the door is open and quick walks in uh, quick walks over to yeah, I see what they're doing and he looks over to Commander Verma and he's he says, Commander, why don't you let me fly it in there? Tala looks up to, um, she looks up to Quick and kind of before Commander uh, says anything, she just shakes her head. No. He looks over a, a raised eyebrow towards Tala. We are equipping the shuttle so we can fly it remotely. There is no need for you to fly it, Lieutenant Quick. Mm, what about if the Borg notice that there's no biological life forms aboard? Um, they wouldn't bother this ship, I don't think. And if they notice that there are biological life forms aboard, they will attack. You are putting yourself in the line of fire just for a test. There does not seem to be any large uh, Borg activity in terms of large ships within the nebula. Yes, we are testing for any dangers, but it seems like a needless risk. What does the commander say? Commander Verma is looking at both Lieutenant Tala and Lieutenant Quick go back and forth. Your recommendations are taken into consideration, Lieutenants. We will attempt with this first ship. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't get back what we needed to get back, I might have to take you up on that offer, Lieutenant Quick. But that would also mean we would be left defenseless because there'll be no one act tactical. But that decision is yours. You can choose to fly the ship out. If the first one fails. But when you do, Consider the fact that the Saturn will be defenseless when we go in. So please think about that. Quick nods and uh, looks over towards Tala and nods to her as well. Mm. Uh, Tala gives a small nod to Quick and continues working on the uh, missiles. Yeah, as you're doing that, uh, Lieutenant Kaiser is um, <laughs> doing his... Uh, <laughs> he's um, working on uh, his solution. Um, so what exactly are you doing, Kaiser? I'm sure it's going to be extremely difficult, but I want to try to dummy dummy this shuttle somehow to where it would read as if a human being was in okay i guess i'm trying to simulate the effects of if a human being was piloting this okay 
Um, so we're going to make this a two-step process. Um, let's do an engineering roll first. Um, actually, let's do that. We'll do a medicine roll first. So uh, this is going to determine just how tough this is. Um, this is a difficulty one. Uh, go ahead and do a medicine uh, insight roll. Um, uh, difficulty one. Uh, if you get us, if you beat the difficulty, um, then the uh, difficulty of the next challenge will be two. If you fail, it will be three. You can use momentum and gain momentum uh, as normal. So this one is an ing or I'm sorry, a medicine. Dare I'm sorry, medicine insight difficulty one. Okay. All right. Um, I f yeah, there's nothing on this one. So let's see what happens. I'm not going to use any. Oh, how much man do we have in? Blue? I think I you have wanna... six. Oh yeah, just mm -hmm. use one. Why not? Okay. Why not? Eh? Okay. Roll three dice. Yep, I got it back. Um, so that's a success. So this is a difficulty two as you're beginning to kind of step through this, how you would do it. Okay. Um, so Kaiser has testing a theory. Mm -hmm. um, so one additional D on its test covering the same scientific or technological field. It's didn't really, it was a medicine role, so actually disregard. I don't think that counts here. Because um, I have to have succeeded on a previous task covering the same scientific or technological I think field. I think it, I think you're working in conjunction with multiple disciplines, but you're still doing the same thing. Okay, we'll call it, okay, so if it's, if that's the case, in 3d20 and it's one momentum for the additional four, is that how it works, or you still pay the two No, for just it? one. Okay. So I'll go ahead and spend another momentum, make it four, and it's engineering reason? Engineering insight. One? Jesus, sorry if that was loud. <laughs> Your bank almost fell. So you gain a momentum. Uh, okay, complication. Uh, not adding threat. So Kaiser sets it up, and he is fairly sure that this will work. Um, uh, that he can, with some samples from his lab, uh, he has various tissue samples and blood samples of humans and other um sentient life forms and not sentient for that matter but organic at the very least um, that he can put in there and he can he thinks he's rigged up the sensors enough that he could uh, possibly tell what it would do well I mean, kind of looks through and I think that should do it we should be able to get a mostly accurate reading. I suppose if all else fails, we could send a cadaver with the next one, though I prefer not to do that. Everyone hear me on that? I did. Uh, does anybody yep. have any response? Yeah, the to law just um, she gives Kaiser a uh, just gives him a nod. Everything should be set up on um, within the cells as well. I think we are almost ready to go. Commander Verma runs final checks on the 
shuttle pod uh, control systems everything looks good here as well and there's only one thing left to do and that's fly the shuttle out into the nebula And Tala heads back to the bridge, I'm assuming, with Commander Verma. Yes. Oh. Are the three of them heading back together? Uh, Lieutenant Quick and Commander and Tala? Quick will. Well, he'll follow back to the bridge as well. Um, Tala kind of falls back a little bit with Quick and she looks to him as they're walking there's no reason for you to attempt to sacrifice yourself so needlessly Quick he uh he smiles a little bit and he's like well I didn't want to just sacrifice myself or anything but uh if it uh gives us a chance of getting out of here safely then you know it might be the best way to do it true but you are indeed needed on the bridge in order to pilot the ship and if we are under the attack you are the most capable of running the weapon systems that destroyed as they are at the moment. He nods and says, uh, yes, that's a logical assumption, I guess. Yes, it is. And he laughs, I mean... Nobody else could man that station like me, right? Kind of jokingly. And Tala, without uh, any trace of humor, she does not. It is true. You are the most capable currently on the ship. He laughs, catching her. Uh... <laughs> and, uh, looks towards Commander, who's most likely listening and hearing them talk. Uh, he says, um, well, hopefully this works, and I don't have to go anyway. Um, I, I would rather be here with, with you both. Um, so, uh... Uh, again, her eyebrow slightly goes up. She just nods. Of course, I'm very sure the both of us would rather have you on the ship. Quick. Commander just says, Yes. And as he says that, the turbo lift takes you down to the bridge. And... You walk to your stations. The uh, con can has been set to uh, remotely pilot the shuttle. Commander Verma um, goes to the the helm operations. From there, he brings up the um, <clears throat> the shuttle bay controls. He um, enters the sequence, opens up the shuttle bay doors and starts controlling the shuttle from the helm operations. He enters various commands to power up the shuttle. It feels a little sluggish with only one nacelle operating but he quickly gets a hang of it. He pulls it out of the shuttle, uh, shuttle bay. Uh, before he actually enters the nebula, he takes a few uh, sorties around the USS Shatton, kind of getting a feel for 
the singleness cell and any sort of delay between the commands he's sending and responses from the shuttle once he's uh, comfortable that he has a good handle on it he looks up to both lieutenant ala lieutenant quick he hits his com badge dr kaiser please stand by i am sending the shuttle into the nebula presently understood commander i will monitor my readings and see what comes back and with that commander verma um engages one quarter impulse and has the shuttle slowly enter the nebula okay as the shuttle begins to enter the nebula verma is well aware um very quickly um that there is a strong uh um disruption uh in the nebula it's uh he's having to evade pockets of uh gas clouds and that sort of thing that's all pretty standard in in most nebula um but uh very quickly it becomes uh, extremely turbulent and with one nacelle he's afraid that the uh shuttle is going to be pushed into some of these uh anti like the dark matter parts that uh is coming up on his scanner so when she go ahead and give me a uh control con or daring con makes better sense probably difficulty 2 okay. all right so give me a moment i believe your pool is full and we're kind of all monitoring mm-hmm. yeah you're all i mean he's in the you can all see it okay so you said difficulty 2 correct yeah, mm-hmm. okay so um i'm going to use my talent push the limits okay um so when attempting a con task that has increased difficulty due to environmental conditions or damage to the engines reduce the difficulty by 1 perfect. to a minimum of 1 mm-hmm. perfect so uh con and daring mm-hmm. and i'm going to use uh so it's difficulty one so i'm going to use um two momentum actually to no i have to use three momentum yeah you would have, no, so have to use you have to use three yeah. yeah so i'm just going to use one momentum okay. um okay and applicable focus yes difficulty one is a success um as you you're able to avoid all this um these patches of uh dark matter which seem to be drawing the shuttle towards them um and uh lieutenant tala you realize that at the same time you're beginning to lose um connectivity with the shuttle and the data is coming back uh impartially and so you will need to to kind of um get around that you need to uh, boost the signal with a science and reason roll difficulty of 2 all right i'm going to spend a uh, momentum on this i don't think i have uh, anything related to this right no i don't believe so This is actually probably engineering reason more than science reason. Okay. Yeah. Use more momentum. Use it. Yeah, she used one. I think three is fine. Or sorry, uh, one momentum. Uh, you can use two more for another die if you want. It's up to you. That's with the negative one, so it would be it would be you would be at two if you use three. Oh, I'd be at two yeah, uh, yeah. dice. Oh uh, no, no, oh, you would okay. be at yeah, you would be at a total of four dice. Momentum would be at two. That's what you would start with. Because I already did the negative one for one die, but your pool is really at five. So, so if you used three momentum for mm-hmm. two additional die, you would be down to um, two momentum. Oh, okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Um so yeah I'll use the two I'll use the three momentum okay. for four dice. Okay. 
Yep. Good thing. Uh, one momentum back. So you're able to quickly um, regenerate the uh, the actual um, uh, signal, and uh, Verma notices for a brief second he actually loses control of the ship when that happens, but uh, quickly he's able to bring it under control. Uh, Dr. Kaiser, you're seeing the same sort of thing, um, and uh, so you, to get your biological data, um, you have uh, remote control onto the ship as well for that system. Um, so if you do a, uh, uh, I would say an engineering insight, uh, or en I would say engineering mm, daring. Engineering daring. Unless you can... Um, Describe what you would do, I guess. Wh whatever you think is best. I'm sorry. Um, if you think it's reason, then if you approach it in a reasonable way, you can use that. Whatever you think. I think with it not being expected, he wouldn't have necessarily planned for it, so daring makes more sense. He just tried to dress on the fly by the seat of his pants, trying to sort it out to make sure he could boost the signal on it and get it brought back in line for the data. Okay. Um, so... Engineering daring. Um, is this going to still stay in the realm of testing a theory? Yep. Or is this considered yep. It's still focus? still working on the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all right. Mm -hmm. And then we have three. Three in the pool. I'll spend one for four days. Okay. Difficulty of two? Yes. Oh no. Yeah, you, um, you're unable to get any readings after a short while, um, of what is happening to your, um, your samples. Um, uh, that would be, uh, O'Connor. Thank you. I want to ask. Um, I want to ask. Uh, O'Connor, is there any way we could? Uh, is there is there too much interference to to pull somebody off, uh, but through the transporter with these readings right here? Um, she says, I. I don't know. Do you want me to try to get a lock on something? No, I'm wondering if we'd be able to beam a person back if there was some trouble on that ship or even beam someone towards it. She scratches her head. I I don't know. That uh there is a lot of interference. I could test something and see if I could beam something back. No, that's all right. What about you, Kaiser? That's a good idea, Quick. Uh, O'Connor, uh, try beaming one of the containers, anything that's lying around, an inanimate object into that ship if you can. Just collect any information you can on the in interferences that you see. Okay. Um, she's like, at once, and she... Uh, be, you know, there's some silence, and she speaks up. Uh, the readings that I'm getting, uh, no, Commander, it doesn't look like it. Uh, I can get a lock. Very well, thank you for that. Of course. Uh, Commander Verma, unfortunately, I'm losing data now. I don't think I can keep up with it. I'm trying to adjust things, but. The readings for the live material or organic material we have are not coming back clear. That's all right. We do what we can. How's the uh, ship doing otherwise? Uh, Commander, I'm getting much information on my end. 
I was uh, losing some, it was coming in sporadically, but I was able to reconnect with the shuttle. What is what is it that you're seeing, Lieutenant? Mm, Tala will start going over the information, trying to decipher it quickly. Yeah, one second. Uh, I'm just gonna, for brevity's sake. Yeah, you're seeing that um, the shuttle is in good shape. It's not been damaged uh, at all by this. Uh, shields are holding. Um, but more importantly, um, uh, I do want to whisper this part. That's the one thing that jumps out very quickly. Yeah, I see Tala going over the data. Um, and she says, it looks like sensors are fine. The shuttle is adequate. Shields are holding and commanded. She looks up. Uh, see her eyes widen a little bit. The entrance is closing. All right, um, and he hits his comm badge. Crewmen of the USS Saturn, we are going to Nebula at high speed. Brace yourselves. Lieutenant Kaiser, do what you can to monitor ship systems with respect to life, life support and etc. Lieutenant Quick, Lieutenant Tala, prepare yourselves. And with that, Commander Verma, um, he's still keeping, like he puts the, the shuttle on autopilot and he... Uh, switches, you know, uh, starts running the USS Saturn to full impulse and enters Nebula at high speed. And what he's doing is whatever information he got while he was um, navigating the shuttle, he's going to take all of that information and basically input it into the navigation system. So it's kind of going to like... Um, He's already kind of laid a breadcrumb out and he's going to use that to help him navigate this much larger galaxy class ship through that nebula towards the wormhole. Yep. And he's not reducing, he's going on full impulse at this point. Yeah, the Saturn begins to uh, launch forward into the nebula and as you get to the um, outskirts of it, there's the ship just starts rocking back and forth. Um, Tala, um, you notice immediately that the shields are, e even though you are, um, working, um, with the, um, coordinates that, uh, Verma had given you, and it appears to be working, you're not going through any of the dark nebula, um, for better word, bubbles, um, but there is a lot of, um, at atmospheric wouldn't be the right word, but uh, spatial anomalies that are um, putting strain on the hull through the shields, and you you see the shields suddenly start to be depleted. She's keeping an eye on percentages at the moment. Um, Captain, shields are slowly starting to fall. Forty percent. Currently at 40%, I will keep an eye on shields, but we need to hurry. 35%. You, you can... He is now yeah, the, moving the ship to warp one at this point. Yeah, Tala, you, you see the rate of speed that you're going and uh, the, um, the rate the shields are dropping and you realize even at your maximum warp which is like 2.4 or something like that right now you won't get there in time uh, before the shields are depleted unless you do something with the shields uh, we need to draw power from other systems to maintain the shields we are not going to be able to arrive to the wormhole in time without the ship being torn apart mm. I say um, draw power from weapons. Yeah, drip, weapons are almost completely offline anyway. 
to repair the sensors. Um, she's going to start uh, kind of quickly rerouting power from uh, less important systems, uh, whatever there is. Yeah, sure. Uh, trying to reroute it back into shields. Yep. Go ahead and give me a. Uh, you can give me an engineering daring roll, difficulty two. Uh, so engineering. Daring. Would this be electromagnetic power system? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna use the momentum on this. Uh, what's the difficulty? Sorry. Uh, difficulty is two. Yeah, the, um, suddenly the ship is, there's an explosion, um, not on the bridge, but somewhere else in the ship, and you see damage reports rolling through the, on the console, damage to deck 47, sir, someone calls up, casualties, fires, and then it's, and goes off and there's various other calls like that as you're heading through. And so Law is just trying to um, quickly reroute as much as possible, trying not to um, remove power from anything, uh, any life support systems or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's just I'm taking too long. So, um, I was preparing for this. Uh, our ship, uh, this is to be good. Um, our ship has saucer separation it does. and secondary reactors. Um, Commander Verma is going to sound engineering. I want you to overload the, the warp reactor. Everyone on board, make yourselves get to the saucer, se the saucer section as quickly as possible. And most of them should be already there. Mm -hmm. um, engineering, I want you, as soon as the warp core is overloaded, jettison the warp core and have it rigged for explosion. Commander, what are you planning? We are going to use the force of that explosion and the saucer separation to propel us to that wormhole. I will make sure to direct most of the shield protection to the um, behind the ship. Very well. All able-bodied members, if you have access to EV suits, I would recommend you wear it right now. Yeah, you, there's just a rush of people uh, throughout the ship getting to the saucer section or manning their station for this eventuality. Uh, or something like it. Uh, to law to do this, you will have to go down to engineering. Yeah, so... To law, um... She disengages from sensors, and... She looks at the commander. Lieutenant, quick! Assist! Lieutenant Tala in any way, way possible. Aye, commander. He takes off with her. And they both hurry down to engineering. Okay, one sec. Okay, uh, you get to engineering. Um... You're running to engineering and the warp core. Um, you know what you have to do, but it's uh, not an easy task. And uh, she looks to Quick. Quick, hop on the um, hop on that console. Um, work in tandem with me, and we'll be able to um, overload the warp core together. Okay. Aye. He runs over there and uh, starts working on it. And she kind of clambers down uh, probably the stairs, um, going towards the base of the warp core, getting to the console there, and starts uh, um, kind of punching in different codes, uh, attempting to overload it. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, quick, give me, you're going to be assisting, I'm assuming. So if you do, go ahead and give me a uh, 
engineering daring roll. Difficulty one for you. That's that's how it works, Cypher. They just on the assist you just go against a difficulty one or do you go against the entire difficulty of so, the task? I can't remember. No, no, so basically the person who's assisting, um, they just need to get a uh, success. On the, on um, the on the full difficulty of the actual task, or just one difficulty? I think no, it's the, just one difficulty. Okay, that's that's, what I, thought, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, engineering, daring, um, difficulty one. For Lieutenant Quick. And can I use a point? If you want. You would roll two dice instead of one. Because on an assist, you normally only roll one, so you'd roll two in this case. Does Tala have enough points? She'll uh, have one. I'll she'll have at least one. one. Yeah. Two doesn't help her, actually, because... Um, actually, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you use all of what you need. Mm-hmm. And no focus. <laughs> Difficulty? One. So you're rolling two dice. Uh, oh. So go, go ahead and roll another die. Because you used the momentum. Just roll d20. So you got to get 11 or below. Oh, I'm a, I actually wasn't going to yeah. use the momentum. Oh, you weren't? Okay. No. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, yep. Uh, so you have two successes right off the bat to law. So quick is whatever. How, how does this look as um, a very scarcely trained someone in engineering helping um, to that extent? Yeah, he's he's sweating and he's been waiting for this moment to uh, to help out and uh, you know what I mean, trying to throw himself and to sacrifice himself in some way that he can, but he does not want to fail. In, in Talaz's eyes a second time, so he's he runs over to the console and he's punching in, not missing a beat, cool. and looking over towards Tala, working in tandem. Yeah, Tala, you, you are shocked about how well Quick is doing. It's basically served up to you, and there's not much even to do. Yeah, you see there's a small smile on Tala's face as she um, works on her end. Um, and she shouts up, Good job, Quick. We should be able to do this. Alright. Difficulty three for you, Tala. What am I rolling? Um, you are rolling um, Engineering Daring. You have um, using a momentum. Yeah, you have another momentum in the pool after that one too. So, um, oh then, I don't know if I should use two both. The more dice you roll, the more possibility to succeed, but also the higher chance of complication. Okay, so engineering daring. Um, I'm gonna spend all of the momentum. Okay. I do have a focus with warp field dynamics. Okay. So you're rolling four dice, mm -hmm. and uh, you have a focus set. Uh, All right, here we go. No. Maybe. So you um, are loading this in, and it's just like, and. You realize that is, um, yeah. That's the thing. I don't. He had two successes, but does that give two successes on the on the actual main task, or does he just get a momentum back from that? Uh, was that momentum added to the pool? I add what it. Uh, I so it was, but that's we can re-roll. That's fine. 
No, that's fine. If it was added to the pool and she took advantage of it, then it kind of cancels out. You know what I mean? Well, she would have. She would have actually passed. Uh, it, no, it passed, right? Because the difficulty three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess Either it doesn't way. matter. So, and then it's just, just like, right? You just, you know, the containment is just like the klaxons going nuts. Containment failure in two minutes. Contain your failure in two minutes. Eject, 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 and it's you know, auto eject in thirty seconds. Yeah. Um. And that's sorry. That's what. Uh, that's what Verma wanted was to eject, right? Yep. Okay. So yeah, that's she. That's my understanding. At least I want to speak for him. But... Yes, that's good. Yes. Okay. Um, so she'll leave the auto eject on in 30 seconds, um, and she'll look up to Quick. We need to get back to the saucer. And she'll start climbing up the ladder, uh, to meet back up with him. Yeah, and he'll, he'll take off. Quickly. <laughs> you guys are hustling up. Um, what is, um, Verma and Kaiser doing at this point? Uh, Verma is basically, um, he's basically timing the ejection and the explosion with the saucer separation to give him that, that final punch that's necessary to get through to that wormhole. So he is basically entering all sorts of commands to, to, be, uh, to trim the saucer section, to, to, uh, stabilize it against the, all the, the, uh, eddies, uh, within the nebula and any other grav- gravimetric forces he's ex- the ship is experiencing as they get closer to the wormhole. He's trying to align all of that to the best of his ability to to make that final jump. Mm-hmm. And what are you doing there, Kaiser? Um, after the explosion, he was working to try to get as many people as he could out of that area. Um, mainly trying to get as many people as he can up to the saucer section so no one gets left if there's any stragglers yeah you see kaiser waving people down the hallway getting them in there as talad and quick get back to the bridge just as uh the countdown 10 9 8 7 and then what happens you gotta describe it to me there verma and as the countdown goes six, five, four, e- the anybody and everybody within the saucer section is now starting to feel the the jolt. As what Verma is doing is basically switching to the impulse power of the saucer section, but he is overloading the systems as much as he can. Um, it's basically a one-way ticket. Either they're going to explode or they're going to make it through. And the entire saucer section is shaking, vibrating against the. The met- gravimetric forces within the nebula, the gravimetric forces as they're approaching to the wormhole, and the countdown goes three, two, one, and then the ejection of the um, warp ma- uh, warp core itself gives them a push. At that very same time, the saucer the saucer separates, and it starts moving, and you can everybody feels that you know there's that um, you know when you, when you have a, a rocket kind of disengage it's it's uh, stage one there's a clunk and there's like initial like zero momentum and then it picks up again so everybody just gets pushed back and forth in their seats and somewhere behind them there is an explosion there is no sound in space but as they're picking up speed there's this huge wave of energy that hits them the entire saucer section starts basically everybody's being thrown around in their seat um, and uh, whatever you know, uh, speed meters on his helmet's reading like past maximum, right? The this, the hull structure is now starting to um, disintegrate. You can see cracks come above on um, in the main uh, what do you call the the bridge? You know, there's huge cracks forming across the ceiling. There's cracks forming across the floor. Um, and the the vision of the uh, the wormhole just gets bigger and bigger in their view space as they keep hurtling towards it. The ship's nose dives down almost 
as you are attempting to get a view of what's happening, suddenly the view screen just <laughs> and goes out, leaving you blinded except for sensors. But you're being thrown about so much you can't even really see what's going on. You should have entered the wormhole by now. You can see nothing besides fires raging, cracks tearing through the ship, and terrible noises of explosions throughout the ship. And then suddenly, you feel the ship begin to right itself as it's simply floating through space and the view screen crackles a few times and you can see um, what is around you one sec oh, go away go away go away sorry um, Um, you there's a moment of almost silence as you look around and you see the stars around you um, I would like um, everyone to give me a uh, everyone that could could see um Go ahead and give me like a, um, boy, what would it be? Uh, command insight, or actually security insight, that sounds better. Task difficulty. One. Do I even roll? Yeah, it's up to you. No, I'm going to say I was far too focused with the other people. Than to... Okay. I'm going to be... Uh, to Verma and Quick, I'm going to be... Yeah, you can go ahead and describe like your situation as this is all kind of unfolded while I do these whispers, if you want. Verma... Um... He's at the at the very last moment, you know. The 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 buffeting is so much that he gets knocked out of his chair. And uh, when the ship kind of comes to that eventual standstill in the middle of space, though he cannot see it yet, he gets up, shakes his head, looks around, makes sure that Quick and Tala are fine, and then gets back in the seat of the helm. He rubs his eyes and um, kind of straightens his hair and does start doing some quick checks on the helm control to get a basic readout of what his and the ship's situation is. And as he's doing that, something catches the corner of his eye on the view screen and he looks up at it. Mm. Tala, um, as they had been going through the wormhole, she tried to kind of maintain the grasp on uh, the sensors area, um, trying to hold on and eventually kind of uh, she flung forward a little bit and cracked her head open um, and she fell to the ground. At this point she's just trying to kind of find her way back up, hands kind of tapping on top of the console trying to pick herself back up. Um, she's pretty disoriented still at the moment. Yeah, and I've done my whispers. Um. Commander Warma um, looks back at the line quick. Did you just see that? Did you just see what I just saw? No, Commander. I'm not sure if it 
if I got knocked out really bad, I just I just think I saw a Vulcan battle cruiser just exit the space at high warp. Lieutenant Tala, can you please run scans whatever you can yeah, of the surrounding area? She'll pick herself back up off the floor, push her hair back, and start uh, tapping away at sensors, trying to get a read of where they are now. Yep. Quick uh, stands up, holding his left arm, which seems like he slid into the console and uh, almost felt as if gravity had given away for a moment uh, before going back online, at least in the area he was standing. Uh, he gets up and he is kind of dazed and gets back over to the console and says to Verma and Tala, I thought I saw a Borg cube for a minute. Yeah, and as Tala is scanning, that is definitely there. There's a Borg cube. It looks pretty much destroyed. And yeah, Tala will look down at sensors and look back up to the fuse screen. According to our sensors, Commander, this is where Narenda Station should be. Narendra. Yeah, that that Our is original location. Yeah, that is where you set out from into the Shackleford expanse. Yeah, so at this point Verma is So that's what it was. They use the wormhole to get back. Mm, and they got back here before we did. Seems like they are destroyed for the most part. Yeah, you there's uh several there's debris of um Federation ships here as well. Um hmm. if I'm not mis if I'm not mistaken <laughs> keeping up with the load though I don't know why you would need it in space I believe uh the the galaxy class ships they do have lights um kind of around the saucer section sure. you know kind of lights like our uh, like our current day airplanes yeah, have sure. So, um, Lieutenant Tala, I want you to try and hook into the, the running lights along the saucer section. How is your Morse code? It is mm, not something I have trained in in quite a long time. I will attempt. Very well. Patch it through to the helm console. I will send the message out. Yes, Commander. And she patches into the like, kind of the running lights on the ship itself and um, makes sure that Commander Verma can access them and use them. At that point, Commander Verma starts typing a message out. This is the USS Saturn. Does anyone need assistance? You repeat that several times, and uh, eventually you see uh, a light flash uh, in response. Um, it's clear it comes from a shuttle. Um, let me, uh, Verma, I'll respond to you what that is. Um, Verma starts punching in the coordinates for that shuttle um, and starts navigating the saucer section through the debris towards that shuttle. Yeah, it's fairly easily done. Um, one second, I'm gonna 
whisper something to you. So what what are you what are you are quick are you on the sensors or what are you guys doing looking at? Um, I'm gonna be uh, yeah checking checking to see uh, if the sensors are working if if uh, actually our status would be probably my priority. Yeah, you you've taken damage uh, extensive damage to the saucer section, but impulse is still uh, you know um, you've heard of um, you getting casualty reports, but actually. Um, they're a lot less than you might have expected in the saucer session section is more or less uh, in decent shape compared to what it's just been through um, but you're doing scans of uh, the surrounding areas as well uh, particularly these um, the debris of the ships and stuff um, one sec As the saucer section makes it way, its way over to that ship, um, the continued more uh, sent out. Uh, there's no more responses. There's been there's been two Federation ships destroyed. One ship. He punches in something on the console. Looks back over. Is the USS Titan. The other is the USS Endeavor. Say that again, Lieutenant Quick. Two Federation ships, Commander. The last one. The Endeavor. Verma throughout this whole ordeal has been even keel. He's not shown much emotion. But the moment you say the USS Endeavor has been destroyed, you, you see him just pop out of his seat yeah and as you do that you notice the shuttle that you're coming up to is a shuttle it has the ID of a shuttle from the USS Endeavor he sits back down quickly and with like renewed vigor he starts navigating the saucer section towards the shuttle trying to dock with it yeah, surprisingly enough, you're able to dock with the, the shuttle fairly easily. Um, it's it's in decent shape. Lieutenant Quick, you have the con. And with that, Commander Verma starts uncharacteristically running out of the bridge onto the turbo lift and towards the docking bay. And Quick barely has time to say uh, I Commander before he, he turns around he notices uh, Verma disappearing into the turbo lift and uh, he looks back towards the uh, sensors and um, would it take uh, the commander a little bit to get oh, there yeah, sure. um, he'll the uh, he'll dispatch if there's any security like close by there to uh, uh, make sure. Yeah, some people are actually. trying to get there, but Verma's moving with some purpose, and there's mass pandemonium, as you might expect. Um, Verma, you get to the um, the hatch. Um, you swing it open, um, and you see um, a a body slumped over the controls. You're not. You can't tell anything about the person other than they're wearing, um, you know, a yellow shirt. Commander Verma rushes to the prone body and uh, kind of moves the chair around, um, creating some space for for the person, for the individual. In a very cinematic way uh, Verma heads towards the um, uh, 
the actual uh, body there as Tala uh, gets some readings at the same time. Um, sorry. You know what that last word was, right? I just misspelled it. Um, so, yeah. Commander Vermi, go up to the, the seat. You spin it around, and you're completely 100% shocked to see who is in the chair. It's yourself. You have Captain Pips on as this um, person is slumped over. You can see they're breathing, but badly injured. Sorry, sorry. Um, so as soon as he sees that, he uh, he hits his comm badge and he says, Dr. Kaiser, I want you to get to the doctor double time. And as he says that, he, he's also instinctively stepping back um, from himself. Um, Dr. Kaiser hits his comm badge. Right away, come in, uh, Captain McMander. And he, he runs, he panically runs back over and starts heading down. Yeah. Um... Kind of at that point, Tala, she hits her comm badge. Commander, there seems to be some sort of um, dimensional anomaly that we've entered. Explain yourself, Lieutenant. The sensors. They say there's a quantum dating error. How much of an error? So I was going to compare basically a uh, current date with the date it's now reading. Yeah, um, the date is exactly the same as um, when you um, left Narinda Station. Um, exactly. However, um, the it, it can trying to techno babble this out. Um, there's there's markers in every quantum signature of the exact um, location of uh, where something originates and there is um, actual data in the database about a um, mirror it's one of the it's called a, a dimensional anomaly but also known as a mirror universe and that's that's the only um, match for the actual quantum signature of this um, of everything. Hmm. The so the date is the same as yeah. When the date I, is exactly the, the same. The current date. The date that you hmm. left Narinda Station is the date that um, you are able to ascertain from. Uh, from the stars. But we are in a mirror universe. You know, yes. It's it like basically a parallel universe. Yes. Yeah. It seems, Commander, that we have entered a mirror universe through the wormhole. The date of when we left Narenda Station. Commander Verma just says one word Ulysses 
Mr. Antala, I want you to come down here double quick as well. Yes. Commander Verma, while he gives an order, also starts looking very carefully at his image. Yeah, you notice subtle differences. Um, first of all, the uniform. As Dr. Kaiser comes in and looks over your shoulder and sees Verma in two places. One Verma, the one that's slumped over, is wearing a... Although he's wearing a yellow shirt, it has different insignias on it. There's a, a fist insignia on the um, left breast where the communicator, or the, the right breast, where the communicator is on the left. This, you can tell that this shuttle is slightly modified as well. It's a uh, Danabu roundabout, but it's been heavily modified for combat, which is certainly uh, not standard issue. Commander, and he looks over the shoulder. Should I, should I proceed? Yes, please. Do what you can to stabilize me. Him. He nods and looking obviously confused is going to head over and um, how stable does this shuttle look? Not very. Uh, it's in pretty good shape. Okay. I should be able to treat some here though I I might have to bring him back to the, the saucer for more. He lays him down and begins to go through some evaluating his vitals and checking yeah, his Yeah, pretty, pretty standard head wound. Um, has some uh, scoring on his right side. Um, but nothing that a uh, little time in the med bay wouldn't fix. Commander Verma hits his comm badge. Lieutenant Quick, can you get down here as well? We will need your assistance. All right, Commander. Yeah, and Quick catches up with Tala as they head in a few moments uh, while Dr. Kaiser's looking over um, the uh, mirror Verma. The first thing they see is actually Verma laying on the ground and Kaiser attending to him, but suddenly see that um, there's another Verma standing there. And, uh, Tala looks from the body of Captain Verma to Commander and back down to Captain. She makes her way over and leans down, looking at his insignia. Um, you said there was a fist mm -hmm. on, yeah. uh, a fist in, in um, a lightning bolt, actually. Is there... I don't know if there's any kind of um, memory, uh, any information she might have about some sort of resistance, uh, some sort of human resistance when originally uh, the Vulcans and the humans kind of first started clashing. No, I mean... You, you're thinking about it, nothing... This does not come to mind at all. Yeah, she looks down, can't really think of anything connecting, but based on what the commander said earlier about a Vulcan ship leaving the air, she looks back up to the command. If this is a mirror universe of a current date, what if in this universe the Vulcans and the Human Alliance never started. Based on where the Vulcans from that small planet came from. If this is the wormhole they came through. Anything is possible, Lieutenant. You're right. This is a mirror universe. It doesn't mean that things in this universe will match up with what we know from ours. I would say approach everything with skepticism at this point. 
Lieutenant Quick, I want you to help Dr. Kaiser move this individual into Med Bay. Also have a security team escort us. Lieutenant Tala, see what you can do from a scientific perspective on reading this individual's quantum signature. Anything that stands out. Of course, Commander. We should also transfer any data contained on the shuttle to our ship in case yes. we can get information about the histories. Yes, please go ahead and do that. When, when Quick first gets in there and he's like, holy... He looks over at the uh, commander. Uh, he's just been standing there with his kind of mouth open and uh, when commander's uh, giving him his orders, he turns, turns to him and he says, uh, uh, I come in. I just had deja vu. That's weird. Could have swore this just happened. Did anybody else see a Vulcan battle, battle cruiser go to warp when we came through that wormhole? Yes, I did too, Lieutenant Quick. He uh, cautiously walks over to the Captain Verma and uh, nods towards Kaiser. We'll move him quickly. Just get him there as quickly as we can and I'll secure him from there. You move... Captain Verma into the saucer. Um, the med bay on the saucer is uh, more than capable of supporting him. Um, to lie, you're able to hook up the um, begin to siphon data, but it's going to take some time to unencrypt everything. This computer uses a encryption that you're unfamiliar with. The, the ciphers are very strong, so it, it will take some time to decrypt. In the meantime, what yeah. would you like to do? Well, I was going to attempt to get uh, a quantum signature reading from uh, Captain Verma. Um, yeah, you take his comm badge off um, and it, uh, it matches everything here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she... Contacts the commander. It will take some time, commander, for me to decipher this information. Um, I can't get too much of a read on this area until it is. I will keep you updated. Very well. I will be in Med Bay. So you're just gonna wait for him to wake up? Yeah, at this point, I don't think else we can, can yeah. do. Um, One sec. That was weird. You really had deja vu? Yeah, I had deja vu that he had ordered me to move himself. That was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> you played this before. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Mirror universe. You're going through, you know, various things over the last hour as, you know, there's extensive damage that's being cleared up, injured people. But uh, Kaiser's working with this uh, individual and uh, eventually his eyes begin to flicker open. We'll wait for guest. <laughs> well, I've been planning just a little aside why he's I've been planning this since episode one. And so it's very, very nice that this actually finally happens. Yeah. Wow. Actually, um so funnily I I was planning on having Emma play the other Verma. Um uh, so oh. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. all in like the planning stages for. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. 
Damn. I'm sorry, but yeah. So I guess it, it's going to be me. It. It's going to be me instead. So. <laughs> yeah. So, um... And this is lore. I'm not just pulling it out of my ass. Mm-hmm. As he's in there waking up, uh, yeah, Quick will be standing there at attention waiting for him to awaken but kind of cautious of him as well and Tala will be of course um, standing at the foot of the bed still looking over compad um, just watching the uh, kind of the decryption um, coding going just waiting she occasionally glances up to Captain Verma looks over to Kaiser and Quick and the commander. I'm just gonna give Ghost just a couple more minutes. Give me oh, what? He's back. Right. Yeah, he, he looks like he's about to wake up. That was the gist of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vital signs are increasing, Commander. Uh, Captain Verma appears as if he's going to wake soon. Lieutenant Quick, keep your sidearm ready, but hidden. All right, Commander. He'll he'll have his uh, phaser like behind his back, standing at attention behind his back with his both hands behind his back there. And a few moments later. The man's eyes open. First he looks up at Dr. Kaiser. He reaches up and rips his face and narrows his eyes. And the next person he sees is Tala and his eyes open a bit wider. He doesn't seem to look at Quick and finally his gaze falls on to Verma and he frowns deeply, but does not say anything. Commander Verma looks at his mirror image. Vishwajit Verma, I presume. Captain Verma. Yes. Pushes himself. He pushes himself up into a seating position. Son of Tanvir Verma, grandson of Ranjit Verma, the greatest warrior in the galaxy. At war with whom, if I may ask? Anyone who gets in our way. Ah. You're from the other place then. So this is not the first time my universe has crossed with yours. He shakes his head. No. We know about you, and some of you know about us. I see. What happened here, Captain? Was it the Borg? The Borg have been neutralized. He actually looks over at Tala her the Vulcans surprised us mm. you are at war with the Vulcans then we are at war with those that remain Vulcan has been conquered
What about? And he kind of pauses himself. Well, you still didn't answer the question, Captain. What exactly happened here? Was it the Borg that initiated this attack, or was it the Vulcans? He frowns. Where am I? Am I in your universe of my own? How did I get here? You are in your universe. We have unfortunately entered yours in our attempt to get back home. Through the wormhole then. Yes. And um, you would have known that the wormhole did close behind you, obviously. Um, yes. He asks, is it still open? No, it's not. It collapsed as we were making our way through it. His f it's not sure if during the collapse we switched universes. He swings his feet over the bed and stands up rather abruptly, pulling any medical instruments off his body. Then they won. For now. I guess they did. Are you also at war with the Klingons? What Klingons? Kronos has been destroyed. Is this area still called Narendra Station in your universe? I don't know of anything called Narendra Station. Will you put me in an agonizer? Or will you free me? An agonizer? What is that? He actually cuts a smile. Uh, that's right. I had not read much of your... people. It is a torture device. No, we do not put... We do not even have an agonizer, let alone put someone in it. I'm sorry. It seems your ship is... Sorry. Has been completely destroyed. Are you the lone surviving member? Looks around. Yes, as far as I know. Got to the shuttle, let the others perish. They were too weak. I'm guessing your sensibilities do not agree with such actions. No, they do not. Let alone coming from an entity that looks, speaks, and is me in a different universe. How will you get home? What ship is this? This is the USS Saturn. <laughs> Fitting. Destiny, probably. You see, Varma, the USS Saturn is a rogue ship here, led by, and he looks at Tala, and nods to her, this half-breed's mother. And Tala looks to Captain Verma, shifting her gaze from Quinn. Captain Benson. The scourge. Mm. Mm. There's a 
small, a small smile in the corner of her lips. It is interesting to know my mother continues to defy convention, even in this universe. Well then, perhaps you can help me and I can help you get home. And how can we help you, Captain? What I saw, it's coming back to me now. He rubs his temples. This is simply a saucer, wasn't it? It's almost destroyed. The ship. Yes, that is correct. But at least it's a saucer. In your case, you don't even have a ship. Return me to my shuttle and I could probably blow this thing out of the sky. Maybe. But no. But you're not at your shuttle, are no, you? No, I am not. I have no intention of doing that anyway, you see. Get me to... Well... The USS Saturn in this dimension. And you can have it. Bring the criminals to justice. And you can fly your ship whole through another wormhole that I know where it is. It seems awfully convenient. He shrugs. Oh, it is very convenient indeed, Captain. You become the hero of your movement to bring the criminal to justice, who I'm pretty sure you're going to put in many agonizers, if I'm not mistaken. And for the price of us getting home. Well... See that that or you're here forever. Man. How is one man going to take down a whole ship? Or do you expect us to assist you in taking down the Saturn of this universe? He looks to Tala and he says, I do. The three of you are all crew. Well, used to be. The two of you are still. You would infiltrate their ship nicely. Even you, if we play it smart. I suggest you take me as a hostage. Deliver them to Admiral Benson. And from there, we'll take back the ship. Soon the crew will shift once they see my dominance. Tala looks to the commander before we agree. Could we speak? I am simply a patient. This is your ship, you can do what you want. And she looks to Captain Verma. I apologize, I was not asking you, I was asking my commander. <laughs> he just sits back down. Turn quick, keep an eye on the captain here. Actually, no. Have some of my men come into this room and keep an eye on the captain. Dr. Kaiser, quick, the Tentala. Let us discuss in the next room. Yeah, Caval comes in and as he sees a massive Klingon, he does not look pleased. As you shuffle past into the uh, next room. Just kind of, yeah. Everybody's over there. Okay. Tala places her hands on the desk. 
thinking for a moment before standing up straight again, looking to the commander. I do hope that we will not entertain the idea of sacrificing the Saturn of this universe. No, definitely not. I am not sacrificing anyone just to get back home. There but is a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. This man knows much more about this universe than we will ever know. And he might know the location of Captain Benson. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Admiral Benson. He may. I assume that is why he wants us to find her. I have a proposal. I'm listening. Tala shuffles from one foot to the other. See this almost a slight discomfort. And she looks to the commander. I have been trained in the ways of mind melding and I can use this technique on individuals who are unwilling. It will take more time and it may cause ill effects, but this might provide us with the information that we need without any sacrifice. Mm. I mean, Dan Kaiser speaks up. He did say they were engaged with the Vulcans, correct? Yes. yes. It's possible that, well, I would have to run some checks because I wasn't looking for it, but I imagine that mind melding is something that your people in this uh, mirror universe, reality, and he's kind of searching for words, might use in interrogation techniques. He might be the conditioned or have something internally that would prevent it or cause you physical pain. If we're going to entertain that idea, I should try to run some scans to see if I can locate foreign objects within his body. That is a excellent point, Lieutenant Geyser, but even if there is some sort of um, physiological or psychological um, stops or anything to at least discourage mind melting of individuals who are higher up within their organization. I am willing to take on that risk. Understandable, Lieutenant Tala, but I think that the commander would agree we'd rather not have you kill yourself trying to mind melt with this dangerous and unwholesome individual. Uh, who is clearly not you, Commander, but has your visage. Quick's arms are crossed and he's like, Have you run the scans on it? Is this guy even human? He is human, as human as they come. He may not act like it, but there's no doubt. I even ran a few genetic traces to see if there was a potential he wasn't who we think he is, but he is indeed... Commander Verma to a T, genetically. Huh. It doesn't even sound like Commander Verma. <laughs> <sighs> These are all good points. But... Like Ulysses, we have a long way to go and we cannot project too far into the future. For now, we shall keep this individual under custody and constant watch. Lieutenant Dr. Kaiser, run all the scans you can. Lieutenant Tala, we're not going to make any decisions about mind meddling just yet. Yes, it is good to know that option exists and we can choose to use it if necessary. For now, we are in a world we know very little about. Like I said, everything must be looked at with skepticism. There's a task of 
unencrypting whatever information that is there on that individual's shuttle pod and there is a bright side to all of this we are right now as we speak in the debris field of federation ships there might be parts out there that we can scavenge and salvage and start fixing the systems on this ship yes we might just be a saucer at the moment with no warp drive but only impulse but we can now at least start getting our communication systems back online sensors back online we need to salvage and scavenge whatever we can in the surrounding space before we move out of here and we need to do it quickly i'm not sure who our friends are here and who our enemies It would be nice to have a new ship. And quick shoot or to last shoots quick a look. Yeah. He just frowns and kind of shrugs. <sighs> Lieutenant Kaiser. Do you still have your scalpel with you? It's put away in my desk, but not really a need for it often. But yes, I have it. I want you to, and he kind of draws a pattern. I want you to mark this, and he kind of turns a cheekbone right here, please. That individual in that room is a security threat. if he ever is to escape lieutenant quicks and his men's confines i do not want him to be giving orders on i need a way to for the people to differentiate themselves from him mm-hmm. lieutenant kaiser nods i suppose i can mark him I should um not go. him the doctor me Are you certain commander? Yes I am. I do not want to feed into his fantasies about our brutal past. Doing this to him would be akin to torture for a prisoner. I am doing it willingly. Kaiser looks at Roman. It's a fair point. And if I'm not mistaken, our systems are able to restore my skin when all this is said and done. So there's no harm. It is a strange request, Commander, but I will perform it. Your reasoning is sound. goes into his desk and gets the um scalpel out and he does apply some anesthetic to the area because again there's no reason to for ne- unnecessary pain to it but many will quickly mark verma on the cheekbone as you draw your scalpel across his cheekbone and blood begins to well up from small wound the camera turns over to captain verma in the next room who's laying there with his arms behind his head looking up at the ceiling with a smile and the screen slowly fades to black that's it all right